Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. In this session, we are going to discuss about AWS end-to-end -end architecture for web applications, web services, and database. So we have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate SAAC02. In this clip, our expert will talk about AWS end-to-end -end architecture for web applications, web services, and database. Hey there, so welcome back. And in this second last module, we're going to look at AWS architecture. And so we're trying to pin everything together, what we have learned so far in this module, especially when we are looking on AWS services. So this is the architecture, which we are saying three tier architecture, where you have a database tier, apps tier, and a web tier. Uh, so outer dotted line represents a region in which you are you have deployed that application. So within a region, you have availability zone one and availability zone two. So remember in earlier, one of the lessons we looked at what is a region and availability zone. So within that, this region, I have deployed all my primary and standby within the same region. Technically, you can deploy them in a different region as well, primary and standby sites, which means um, the applications which are available. And if there's any problem with that entire data center, it can be picked up by another uh, site. And that's what we are doing in availability zone two. So uh, this is my availability zone one, and this is my availability zone two, which is uh, in the second dotted line here. Now, within availability zone one, I have a uh, network. So these, um, uh, I've defined a VPC, which is a virtual private cloud. Um, the whole outer dotted line is a VPC. In that, I've created three subnets. One is my date bottom at the right bottom, you see database tier. And then second subnet is for my application, which I'm seeing uh, my application tier servers, which is my app servers. And these are in auto scaling group, meaning if the demand increase, they can automatically scan or span or create new machines as well. So I have app servers just representing two here. And then my, I have my web application, which is my web servers. This is my like things like Apache or IIS or any other web server here. So I'm running web server here. And on top of that, I'm deployed a, a load balancer um, on front. So load, and then on top of load balancer, I have a route 53 or which is a DNS server. So my application is accessed, my user sitting here, they will come to the, my, uh, uh, to the, this um, th through route 53 uh, DNS and then forward request to the load balancer. Load balancer will in turn forward it to one of these two web servers. That web, ser web server in turn will forward it to application server for application logic. And application logic will behind the scene will connect either to Elastic Cache, which is a, we saw in-memory database or a relational database service, or you can have DynamoDB, whatever data store you want. So this is where the application will be accessible. Then for disaster recovery, what I've done is I've configured a, a, a standby site of this relational database uh, in another availability zone. And I've configured my app server, which saying that if this RDS backend database is not available, uh, forward my request to this standby database and we can open the standby database if, if required. Now, then for my backup purpose, I can store the backup of my web server, app server, as well as my relational data into the bucket, or I can store some of the data into this bucket, which is a simple storage service S3 we saw. Uh, I can also have my static data stored in buckets. So my like images, GIFs, any data coming from the database, which is static, will be coming from a bucket. And then it's serving my request to uh, through the cloud front, uh, which is a uh, con content delivery network. And um, any static data is being accessed from this through the cloud front. So this is in an overall uh, nutshell about the core services. Then if I want, I can then integrate it with other applications like I can monitor this instance using CloudWatch, the entire thing. If I need any email requirements or notifications, I can use e, um, email notification service e, uh, or simple email uh, service, SCS, we saw. Uh, we can connect it with DynamoDB, which is a document management or simple email service um, here. This is SNS, simple notification service, and this is simple email service I can integrate with this. So that's a, my entire application architecture or solution architect architecture. Now, if again, uh, depending on what program you are watching this, we might be uh, in solution architect, we go and do an entire project work on this. Similarly for DevOps, 
we do a separate DevOps project, which is continuous entire um, end to end CICD, which is um, uh, entire project on, on DevOps through CICD tools. Now, again, same thing uh, with a high availability architecture. I've already mentioned you have my uh, front end servers. Uh, which is uh, the uh, my application connecting through the internet gateway to the load balancer load balancer is then forwarding request to my ec2 which is my elastic compute which is my virtual machines and that virtual machines behind the scene forwarding request to the database server so this is a the way you used to deploy three tier architecture my web tier app tier and database tier something similar in cloud you can do that as well. So I have availability one set of servers in availability zone one, another set of servers on availability zone two, which is um, US East one and one B. So that's about um, the deployment about AWS architecture. Now head on to the next and final lesson of this module where we say, how do you access service? We'll also, I'll also point you to the in accessing services. How do you create an account on AWS trial account? And this will be the perfect time for you. If you have not already created an account, then you will be creating an account. I'll point you to the video and lessons, uh, which will be pointing to the next module, how to create uh, AWS uh, cloud account, trial account, and access these consoles um, and different ways to connect. So we have put down everything about the certification, including the basic concepts that one should know everything like introduction to AWS, security management AWS, object storage options, designing computing environment, networking and monitoring services, leverage route 53 for hosting zones, database server and analytics, application and messaging services, configuration management and automation, architecting on AWS one and architecting on AWS two. So in this training, we take you from basic to advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on job support. So if you want to become an AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step-by-step -step training for you that includes hands-on labs, including the exam preparation and most important part, one year on-job support. So if you are interested in this program, I would highly recommend you to attend the free class which covers most of the topics like why and who should learn AWS, cloud service deployment models and AWS services, demo on creating S3 bucket and making data available to the entire world and many other topics. So if you are interested in this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash AWS SA02.